ho! Merry Keto! That's right, it's the Is It Keto Christmas special. I'm your host, Santa Jimmy, joined as always by Florian Himsel. Yep, I was always here, no interruptions at all. The number one co-host of Is It Keto. Hello, everybody. Damn, Kino Corner, your your Florian impression is getting really good. I actually thought that was him for a second there. Yeah, you know, one of the things is that uh, under each of the videos, there's always a few people that say, hashtag not my Florian. So I've been really working to become their Florian. You, know, it's, <laughs> you wanted to become our Florian. Yeah, I mean, I care about the fans. I care about what they want. Um, I just want to become their Florian without the dog shit opinions. Well, speaking of dog shit opinions, we're also joined by Weekend Warrior. How are you doing, guys? It's me, dog shit opinion <laughs> haver. <laughs> oh, damn, I, I was th- the not swearing challenge. I failed it already. God damn it. Like, <laughs> well, you continue to do so. Yeah, I hate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway. why did you want to self-impose a self-swear challenge? Could it be that a certain television program has sworn you off of swearing because of how lame they made it appear? Yes, exactly. It's like they took the fun out of saying the swear words, and it really irked me immensely. Well, at least one good thing came of it. I'm I'm so tired of all these people just swearing. Now everyone is tired of it. That's, oh, that's fuck perfect. off! <laughs> I, I would never use the bad words, okay? So it is... It is so true, just... Well, to make it clear, we are here to discuss the hilarious new eight-episode comedy streaming on... What HBO was this on? Pirate yeah. Bay? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the hilarious new <laughs> stop motion uh, animated comedy starring Seth Rogen, everybody's favorite Twitter friend, always giving great advice <laughs> to his neighbor neighbors and uh, getting his car robbed 18 times a day. Uh, I guess let's begin with uh, Florian because we we have to get the contrarian takes out of the way. <laughs> Florian, what did you think of Santa Inc? Well, at first I was like, yeah, I'm definitely watching this, so I might as well come on here and, and talk about it. And yeah, I, I was engaged. I liked the story. I, I did not like the comedy. The comedy is the worst thing ever. But I mean, I, I thought there'd probably be a, some kind of market for it. Someone must like this kind of horrible comedy. But as it turns <laughs> out, not a single person liked this comedy. So that, that was yeah, a, is a this, big surprise Is it true to that me. this is... Did I read, Kino, that this is the lowest rated TV show of all time? Yeah, at least there was an article. I I think they were going off of the um, user scores on Rotten Tomatoes, where it has below a one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's very low on on IMDb as well. I think it's it's worse than Disaster Movie even, and that one's like... Oh, damn. It's really bad. It's... um, yeah, it, it's it's very much low rated, but Mumkey, I, I can't believe that you didn't talk about the star of the show, the uh, the strong female woman who's uh, most popular and probably her funniest sketch is when she put on blackface, and that's uh, Sarah Silverman, who plays as Candy Smalls, the uh, the uh, uh, main character of the of the movie of the TV show. Oh, I you say. mean she's reprising her role from Wreck-It Ralph playing literally a character named Candy Smalls, which I mean, <laughs> I don't remember her character from Wreck-It Ralph, but I can't imagine it was anything other than Candy Smalls, was it? Well, in this in in this movie though, she, or in this TV show, uh, she plays as a stereotype of a Jewish woman. So, uh, I don't I'm not sure. Well, she, she is a living stereotype of a Jewish woman, so <laughs> yeah, at least she was typecast correctly. Accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, Florian, continue. What about the story? Did you like? Um, were you particularly uh, were you particularly enamored by the fact that the past Santa um, was in love with a certain Austrian leader? Uh, I mean, sure, that was a fine plot point. <laughs> Whatever. But the I former mean, Santa supported the Third Reich. Yeah, yeah. Like that part. <laughs> I mean, that was good. Good. Yeah. I mean, makes sense. Like, if you if you look at the the premise of the sense. show. Well, if you look at the premise of the show, which is that, that that Christmas is some kind of corporation, some kind of Santa Incorporated, then it would make sense that they would have like Nazi ties, like like a lot of the the big companies still do, like like Hugo Boss or or Fanta or whatever. They they all like had really You're big just ties to my the Nazis. Companies. I bet. I'm wearing I bet Hugo you, Boss right now. Yeah, wearing a 
a literal SS uniform by Hugo Boss right now. I know. It is so yeah, funny. Yeah, drinking think, Fanta. While yep. we're discussing the plot, I should say that it's a pretty lame metaphor for either the United States presidency or just corporations in America in general and how it the show presents it as being a real bro culture and it's all these white men at the top and the white men are always Santa and there's never been a woman Santa and there, there's never been a Jewish Santa and they keep fucking saying that like it means anything. Oh, there's never been a Jewish Santa, guys. Isn't this some hard-hitting uh, cultural relevance that we're, we're putting into our show here but why like, no, would there be a jewish santa sucks. why there isn't there a hanukkah be. corporation why does a jewish girl a whole jewish family work for you and know the, the Christmas? reason why we haven't had a jewish president is because it would be redundant <laughs> right well although it ends to publicly have the power it's, bu- it's well, supposed to be behind the scenes you fuckers monkey that's how the show ends what? Sh- oh, yeah. oh my god, you're right. Holy, holy <laughs> shakamoli. episodes. What, what did I just uncover So, uh, so I, how the show s- ends, guys, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna spoil Go the show for anyone who's watching, but I'm telling you, I was not joking when I tweeted that I think that Santa Inc. is anti-Semitic propaganda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was not a joke at all. So how the show ends is that the, the stupid kid, the Chris Griffin character... Uh, whatever his name is, Devin. Uh, the can- intern? No, the in- he's the only character I like. But he's, he's played by Nicholas Braun from Succession, and he's uh, playing the same exact character again. Yeah, but he's basically the Chris Griffin of the of the show, and mm, he's the cousin Greg of the show. And but anyways, uh, g- g- going past uh, you know comparing him to other to other media, but um, obviously he looks like he would turn out to end up looking like Santa so Santa chooses him as his successor but Devin that's the plot of succession what the fuck <laughs> this show is a rip off of Bojack Horseman and <laughs> succession it's a it's a piss poor imitation of both but anyways so uh, Candy right so anyways he's so stupid or he's like so like uh, I don't know like he doesn't believe in himself and everything like that he won't do anything unless Candy gives him the go ahead and then the Seth Rogen Santa uh, it turns out he has all this kind of dirt on him, so Candy gets all this blackmail on him. So it ends with Candy going like, I might not be Santa, but I own you to Santa and to the future one. So it ends with her controlling everything behind the scenes due to blackmail yeah. and due to manipulation. That's literal Jewish propaganda uh, or anti-Semitism, uh, pretty much word for word. Yeah, I told you that it was literally the most anti-Semitic thing I think I've uh, seen all week. I mean, can I, we I, also I... Talk, can, can we also talk about how she ran over the black guy <laughs> <laughs> and then doesn't care? She hey, runs don't, over. Don't, care. Yeah. She runs don't over forget, Rudolph Jr. Don't forget she, yeah. she was on her phone while she ran him over. Okay, so she yeah. was like irresponsible Texting and driving. And and then yeah. she hits and run because because he insults her and then she's just like, nah, gonna let you die. So, so that was that was definitely good, but I, I gotta say, like you you say that this is like you you saying this is like bad satire that 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 Santa is almost always white and stuff, but yeah, the the point here is that we're talking about like a corporation, and if you look at the CEOs of corporations of like the let's say the the Fortune five hundred or five hundred biggest corporations, what what do you think the amount of female CEOs is? Look, well, I'm can- not saying it's inaccurate. I'm saying it's bad satire. Satire oh. has to be clever and a little funny. Yeah. And this is just like it's written. This, the entire show is created and written by a woman. And I can tell that she uh, was on a few hard times trying to be a, a writer or a developer of TV shows. And my assumption from this show is that her shows are all terrible. Everything she writes is terrible, but she just assumed it was because she was a woman. <laughs> so then she wrote this show. It, this The whole yeah. show is about how it's so hard to be a woman and trying to get into any business with men is impossible. And she goes to the men's parties and they're just like, 
shaving each other's backs and like showing off their dicks and stuff. Like it's not even close to being clever satire. Okay, I, yeah. I was afraid that you were gonna say it's inaccurate, but if you think it's it's not clever and it's stupid and unfunny, I I agree. That that makes sense. Okay, I was I was afraid you're gonna say it's like a straw man and reality isn't isn't this sexist or or this horrible and and there isn't like sexual. Well, nothing is as horrible on. as this fucking show. No, yeah. the satire amounts to what if college boys ran corporations, but they're old men. That that's the extent of how clever in so many quotes. The satire the scenes are also. In the co- yeah, in the co- in the country club or, or whatever, whatever business meeting they have. Oh, I'm gonna smoke a hole. I'm gonna smoke a wreath. Then, then dear guy goes. I'm gonna smoke a dick. And then the dick will <laughs> penetrate the the hole. Oh, isn't that funny, guys? It's it's a sex joke. Oh, 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 all business meetings are like this. That's not to say there are like there aren't any high level businessmen who are you know pervs. But they're not gonna spend like eighty percent of the meeting gonna go ha huh, ha huh, boobs ha huh, ha huh, dicks ha. Huh. <laughs> they're not gonna do that. Especially in the age of smartphones. Just fucking yeah. film it, you stupid cunt. Yeah, exactly. It's so yeah, um, no, in the, it feels in the comedy. Uh, it feels like it was late. Is that does that make sense? Like it I think if this was like in the height of Me Too, this would have been some sort of like hashtag Me Too, this would have been some sort of like great thing to do. Take that patriarchy, I can feel I can feel it now. But it's like far too late. I don't uh, think so. I, I think it's actually, like, it uh, mm. comes at a pretty good time, considering that we just had, like, a couple of corporations having, like, really big sexual assault scandals, like like Activision Blizzard and, and other Sorry, ones. Hmm. You, you dropped out, man. What, what did you say? A, co- a couple of big corporations, then you disappeared. He, he oh, said, yeah. like, Activision Blizzard. Um, mm, oh, but what yeah, I, okay. But, but what I want yeah, to do, I what I also want to bring up wise. is how... What I also want to bring up is how um, uh, the comedy also consists of having cutesy looking characters uh, say fuck and shit and also have like sexually explicit dialogue uh, for the sake of trying to be funny. But the thing is, is that it's just, you know, hearing some reindeer lady talk about how she had a threesome with, you know, whatever other reindeers that like that's not funny. It's just. Honestly, the, the delivery of, of all their jokes is just terrible. And what they also do is they mistake political diatribes for jokes. So, you know, there's like a joke in there that's like a... Um, the the uh, vaccine one? Well, the vaccine and the Holocaust one, yeah. But also also um, the, can- the uh, gingerbread lady saying like, uh, um, oh... Uh, you know, maybe at, we could just live in a in a country that had healthcare and maternity leave and focused on empathy. And it was delivered like it was the punchline when it's just a political diatribe. And it's like, you know, you could have something that's funny that's maybe getting that same point across without well, it's it being funny, super it would, cringe. It's actually really funny that you would say that because, like, the comedy is, like, horrible all the way throughout. Like, my my favorite example of a bad joke is where, where Santa complains that the black guy left and worked for Amazon. And then he goes for an uninterrupted, painful two minutes of, of making a metaphor of how, how they've been fucked without lube. And, and you're... You're annoyed at the the few the few no, jokes I, that are like political. I'm annoyed at every single joke. I'm just using okay. an example of where they mistake like a political sort of you know political diatribe for a joke, which happens quite a lot. Um, but yeah, the the two minutes of saying we've been fucked without lube, and then to continue saying that, it just gets really, really boring. Honestly. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's it's yeah. it's so bad. If like the jokes were just replaced with fart noises, I think it would like jump. <laughs> it would, it, it would yeah, jump it would to like the tense worst series. Yeah, 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 it would greatly improve it. It would be yeah. like may, maybe like a three out of ten on IMDb. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> what what a life hack! They should try that one next. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, Seth Rogen as Santa Claus, did it bother anybody else that he did not even give a performance? Because he's just doing his normal voice. He's not doing a Santa voice at all. And people keep asking, why are they casting Hollywood celebrities as voice actors when they can't voice act? And this is a prime example. He didn't even fucking try to be Santa Claus. He's just doing himself. No, he didn't try at all. 
And and, and in fact, there's a there's a scene. Uh, is it in episode four or five? where he smokes a giant bong, and I'm like, okay, I was just waiting for this scene to happen. <laughs> so he's got to get his weed smoking in at some point. Yeah, the and, Santa and... figure, the Santa figure also kind of looks like him with white hair, right? Uh, was I the only one that noticed well, that? Well, I, I think that's not so bad, actually, because like the whole point is that there's been like a succession of different Santas, so it would make sense if they just like took Joe Ro- uh, Seth Joe Rogan, Rogan. <laughs> and, and made <laughs> Joe Santa. Rogan and Santa. They, yeah, they yeah. just looked like a big beard on. I mean, that would make sense. Like, if he were, if he would run for Santa, I'm sure he he could probably make it. I I think that would be, that would be fine. I think that makes sense. But go on. I think they just wanted to get big name liberal celebrities in the top spots because Sarah Silverman is also not performing. She's just rating the lines in her normal voice. Yeah, so I just feel like is... the the show was as lazy as possible, and they just threw in big names instead of real actors. Well, here here is the perfect description of the show it is a three hour long um version of a bad robot chicken sketch that's literally the show it's, it's three funny hours. That, that you would say that because did you know that robot chicken has 11 seasons and it has like a, an eight out of ten on imdb and i i, I actually like watched chicken i watched a, an episode of robot chicken and i thought it was about as bad as this show. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like surprised that this is actually not done this worse. I, I, I think I, I remember yeah. I liked Robot Chicken when I was about 14, and I watched it again recently, and I felt bad that I liked it as a child. Oh, it's, it's so bad. It's so unbelievable bad. It's it's just like, hey, this is a scene for a movie. What if something fucked up happens? Oh, we're going <laughs> down. Next scene of a movie. Oh, fucked up. Which Here is the plot of this. The plot of this is, hey, remember those old uh, stop motion. <laughs> Like, it's the same style of, uh, but, what would you call it? What era of filmmaking but, is this Kino? But I would say that this has, like, a good narrative, but I guess I'm the only one I on don't, that one. I don't <laughs> think it has a good narrative. I, I think it has a, I think it has a pretty pedestrian narrative. Um, but, no, the, the, it's kind of going for that, like, uh, um, it's parody, the, like, the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It, yeah, those, the Frosty cartoon. Yeah, there was all that stop motion. Was it in the '70s where they were doing all those like stop motion Christmas shorts? Um, I thought you would be the expert, as you are the Santa pilled Kino Corner on Twitter. So I thought you would have all the knowledge. <laughs> yeah, there is there is one about um, Jack Frost. There is another one that was like the the Burgermeister of in Germany that was like a bad guy. Um, Nineteen seventy nine Kino. Yeah. The, so the Rudolph and Frosty. Yeah. So, so did like, you was... act? Did you actually say you liked Robot Chicken? Is that what I heard, Kino? No, I said Robot Chicken <laughs> sucked. Oh, okay, good. I'm, I'm glad we all agree on that one. But, but I'm no, like, but what I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying, I, I, I think I can Robot understand. Chicken. I think I can understand though why Robot Chicken would get a higher score than this. It's not because it's necessarily better or worse. It's because with Robot Chicken, each episode is like 10 minutes, 11 minutes, something like that. And each sketch only lasts for fucking 10, 15 seconds, right? Well, so by the well, time you're on to the next sketch... what does that matter if it goes on for 11 seasons? Like, no, I mean, but, what I'm, but what I'm saying is that like, you, people, people forget about whatever happened the last, you know, in the last sketch. Like, you can get to, a, to the end of an episode of Robot Chicken... And completely forget what happened in the first half of it because it's just like throwing so much at you so you just kind of forget about it um the problem with santa inc is that it continues on the same story so you don't forget about it that's the problem it stays with you <laughs> yeah after. at least a robot chicken segment has the decency to end after two minutes but this just won't ever end yeah that's what i'm well, saying it's, it's I, probably I think canceled now sadly <laughs> I don't know. It's been it's been a pretty big uh, media uh, juggernaut. Did you see somebody who plugged in the dislike thing so they can still see dislikes? Uh, I posted it in the chat, and the ratio on the trailer for this show. What was it? It was okay. It's a uh, three point four thousand thumbs up and one hundred twenty nine thousand thumbs down. So I this think is it's clearly gone up a since. very popular product. Yeah, I think it's gone up since then. Yeah, is it is it 
Is it still viable to just go for dislikes on YouTube? I used to make videos that would just farm dislikes and they would get confused, but I, I wonder if that's still possible <laughs> now that the dislikes are hidden. Uh, no I'm guessing how... no. We'll oh, see. Man. Yeah, but, but you could like derive it from from the number of views versus the number of likes. Like I think uh, Possum pointed this out. Like if there's a video that has a 1 million views and there are like only 3k likes, that has to be a great video, right? <laughs> so, so, well, well give I just want to. I want to pause yeah. a little conspiracy theory. Uh, is it a coincidence that Susan Wojcicki, a uh, female CEO, by the way, takes away dislikes right before the Santa Inc. trailer drops? <laughs> well, what are signs Very that this will curious. be? What are signs that it will be this hated? I mean, Seth Rogen has been popular in the past. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, I, I wonder what Keenan. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, I'm guessing, had very little involvement with the creation of the show. I think he just came in to record his Santa lines, like maybe in a day, and then left. And then he was got really <laughs> passionate about promoting the project on Twitter because he thought he was owning the uh, the neo Nazis that well, don't exist. Let me let me look this up. Creator Alexander Rushfield. Okay. Who the hell's that? Just some know. woman who couldn't get work and then wrote this script about how shitty it is being her. Uh, so guy? Sarah Silverman was an executive producer. Oh, Seth it's Sarah Green. Silverman vehicle? Seth Green Makes was sense. an executive producer. And what? So was the Seth robot Rogen. chicken guy worked on the show? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you it was just as bad as Oh, chicken my God. Guy behind everything. <laughs> Seth Green, come on, man. At least he's, he's still the better Seth, but I'm I'm still pretty disappointed. <laughs> but Seth Rogen right, so was did, also an executive producer, so I'm yeah, sure I, that I they thought hadn't. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm wondering who who did he think this was for? Because his audience is like the the potheads, and they grew up in way way before this generation, so they've got an edgier sense of humor. They watched uh, Pineapple Express and all that jazz. Now he makes a new cartoon about a girl boss being held down by the men in society and it's extremely unfunny and half the jokes are just stating their political opinion. Did Seth think this would be a success and that his fans would love it? Because I don't I don't know if he thought that through. Well, he obviously thought so because he made sausage parties so he probably thought he could pull anything off, right? But I mean, obviously this didn't pan out. But I, I, I don't honestly yeah. get it because I feel like it should at least have gotten like two or three points out of ten. I'm. I'm actually surprised it did this poorly, just because it's unfunny, and and I guess, I mean, well, look, I, there's probably if something you're a comedy, to it. If you're a comedy series, the thing that you should try to be is funny. If you're <laughs> <laughs> like, if if you're being a comedy and you're not funny, then you've completely missed the mark. <laughs> and and well, yet, Robot like... Chicken has eleven seasons, so I don't know, man. Well, at least Robot Chicken is trying to be funny. I feel like this new generation of uh, uh, Gen Z writers, or whatever you want to call them, they seem to think that they have a moral obligation to make anything they create as preachy as possible, with the hope that their eight-episode cartoon, Santa Inc., will somehow revolutionize the world with all the hilarious things they point out about society, when really it's... It really should just try to be funny, and they they didn't try that at all. Well, it, it goes back to what Norm Macdonald said about like uh, comedians going for claps rather than for laughs, which I felt that a lot in the show, where it was trying to be like trying to get you to say I agree with that or that's that's so true, rather than actually trying to make you laugh. Well, I I still have to completely disagree with that one because there are just so many jokes that are like specifically just to be funny and someone definitely put effort in but it was just like so the opposite how much of effort? funny how much effort oh, I, <laughs> oh I, ha I have to say though i have to say like all the the stop motion is actually good oh, it's I, beautiful, I felt bad yeah. for the people that made the elves <laughs> and and all the all the time you have to spend you have to spend just making the mouths move and and, and the characters move and it's all in the service of one elf saying fuck a lot. So it's really annoying that so, all that effort is wasted. So we can worry, I have a question for you. How, how, how much oh. did you think that the animators like uh, 
how depressed do you think the animators were when they had to uh, um, animate the, uh, oh, the gay sex scenes? Oh, guys, you're dropping out, guys. I'm sorry. I can't hear uh, you guys. It's, it's just you, apparently. I hear yeah, you. I think oh, it's, it's just, just me? You. What? Yeah. But That's so weird. I mean, uh, uh, what, what, okay, what were you me? asking, Kino? Sorry. Yeah, uh, yes. I can hear you now. So um, my question is, uh, how depressed do you think the animators were when they had to animate uh, A, <laughs> The, the gay sex scenes and B, the elf grandma being naked uh, and trying to be sexual. Very. <laughs> like. Hey, I like it's those parts. It's, it's okay. a black, it's a black <laughs> hole out of 10. Like, I, I think they were so, like, I, I can imagine them coming out of college. Like, oh, I'm going to make <laughs> a, a good animated film uh, with with what I've learned. And some, some girl named Alexander Rushfield hired them to, to make this. Abomination. So and yeah, I like so, when so, they made the little penises. Okay, I that, the gay sex <laughs> oh. is, is my favorite in this. Okay, it's, it's very it's very well done. Oh, yeah, Jewish people are that. obsessed with someone getting their hands that. on little penises. Yeah, someone clipped Florian Uh-oh. saying gay sex is my favorite. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one thing that I laughed out loud, and I don't know if it, if it was because of the joke delivery or it. it Reminded me of something back in college when, after what's her face, Candy Smalls gave her a speech, and apparently the candy bar was made of meth, and and her speech was ruined and everything. And <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Claus went, "Oh, thank you. Your your speech was great. It was. It reminded me of a Holocaust lecture as opposed to the other guy." And I laughed out loud because. When I was in college, I we there was a philosophy class I was in, and we had to watch a Holocaust documentary, and like eighty percent of the class went went to sleep. They took a nap. Like it was one of the most boring documentaries I've watched, and even the professor pointed it out. Like, oh, what? Why is why is a documentary about the Holocaust making people take a nap? Like. I think uh, I think Florian and Kino reviewed that. <laughs> yeah, Florian and I reviewed that. Uh, it's ten hours long. It's called Showa. Well, it seems unlikely. Oh my god, that, is that, that one? Uh, the, I don't know what? if it's Showa or just a part of it. Because well, was it ten was hours? Like, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't ten hours. It was, it oh, was like I, I guess an hour. And there was there an old British woman talking about pogroms and whatnot. No, maybe, maybe uh, it, no, that was okay. Nice. It's a different. It's a different documentary then. <laughs> well, now that uh, Weekend Warrior has started us off, I think we should keep going around the horn and everybody has to say something about the show that they enjoyed. I'll go. Kino, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so I enjoyed one line in the entire show. Um, I made a note of it. It's when Santa says, uh, fat men, fat men are, can be funny. I th- he says something like, fat men can be funny, but, but fat women are just gross. And I like that. See, yeah, that was supposed to be like uh, like a, a double uh, double standard, but no, it's just the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, <laughs> oh, no. finally a red pill. <laughs> wow, history repeats itself, huh? Just like when we watched Thunder Force together, those hilarious fat women in that, and you, you guys just <laughs> don't appreciate them. How could you? Such I mean, I guess I was laughing at them. <laughs> Florian? <laughs> well, Florian, what was your favorite part of the show? Well, I guess I would say that, like, I, I feel like it's gotten progressively better, and I actually like the the last season, or uh, the, the last episode a lot. I, I guess... Where it's I revealed like that the Jews part. run the world? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just her, just... Like, one person is in charge of, of one company somewhat. Come on, it's the Jews really... Mm. Yeah, a very small but, number of people are in charge of a well, lot of... Big don't things. they call... Isn't Sarah Silverman's character called a Jewish elf the whole time? Yeah, she doesn't even celebrate Hanukkah. Yeah, she's yeah so she's called Jewish, Jewish. And then the show ends with her running a shadow government secretly. And that's the plot? Yeah. Okay. Well, so well course, I feel uh, like of course the, Florian the, likes it. I'm sure he binged all of uh, the greatest story never told after we told him. About it. <laughs> I, I would Florian, never you watch watched the greatest story anymore. never told? <laughs> I couldn't have. It's illegal. Come on. Well, well, now that we're half an hour into the podcast, the censors are no longer paying attention. So, uh, <laughs> Kino Corner, what did you think of Adolf Hitler, the greatest story never told? <laughs> oh no, I didn't see it. I can't comment. So, so monkey, so monkey, DM me. 
last week saying like, hey, have you heard of this? And I said, yeah, because it was like a meme on 4chan like 10 years ago. People would link it on 4chan all the time. I never watched it. So I watched the first hour of it. And it's... What is it? For anybody who doesn't know, what is it? Okay, so so it's a six hour, or maybe it's longer, six and a half hour long uh, documentary basically telling Adolf Hitler's side of the story. And it's it's essentially a pro Adolf Hitler documentary trying to paint him in the absolute best light possible. And And Florian narrates the whole thing? (laughs) Yeah, Florian narrated the whole thing. That's what really shocked me. I was like, can wow. We hear, can, can you do your Florian impression while narrating some of the film? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So the, the Fiora started to eat the corn pizza, and it was so delicious. But what, So what was really funny about this is, I, I watched an hour of it, and then I fell asleep, um, is that it's it swings wild like wildly in terms of production quality where they have like <laughs> reenactments and i was thinking like how do they how do they get so many people to reenact this for like a pro hitler movie you know like well from yeah. what i understand the movie was made in microsoft uh, movie maker in 2003 so i'm guessing they just pulled footage from they, actual movies oh yeah they could have they also were stealing they stole the score from band of brothers <laughs> um, yeah, so it has like the Band of Brothers theme play over like montages of Hitler being happy. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. And, um, and they just then, have like hours of B-roll of Hitler smiling. <laughs> yeah, and then and then some of the some of the voiceovers done by like a uh, text to speech program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no! And then they have some people who are doing voiceovers that literally like stumble over their words, where the guy like misses his word and has to like repeat himself. And I'm like, how did this make it into this? But I guess if it was made in a Microsoft like. Uh, like Microsoft the movie maker that makes a lot of sense. Well, just based off the the screenshots you sent me, it just looks <laughs> like <laughs> it's yeah, well, the, the, there's can I, like Can I also just point out that I I I'm, I'm looking at I I I I'm just going to say, you know, just a quick aside. I I Google, I went to the IMDb page of the greatest story never told. And it, it's it's sitting comfortably at seven point five out of ten, which makes it higher <laughs> than this mo- than this show. We're Literally seven about. times better. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we yeah, go. Then it, it's it's proven that 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 all the people who vote for movies on there are definitely white nationalists. So Seth Rogen was right in his tweet. He, he oh my god! All the Nazis. Okay, it happened. Take that, Yoden. Uh, can, can we say that? Oh, uh, we can say anything. <laughs> so anyways, did they have like a, a really good actor who played Hitler in that show or or is it just like clips from from random people playing it, him? It might have been clips from cuz it kind of came across the production quality of the reenactments. It's like something from the History Channel and considering how many Hitler related uh documentaries there are in the History Channel, maybe they just pulled from one of those million um you know, so, but I was, I was like, I was thinking, cause you know, I don't know anything about the production behind it. Like, how do you get all these people to act in a pro Hitler documentary? Like it, I, implying just, you wouldn't, <laughs> I probably would not. Uh, that would definitely kill your career. And besides, I'm not exactly a fan of the guy. Needless to say, I don't exactly. Even after hearing the true story, you still, <laughs> you still aren't convinced. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still not convinced that Adolf Hitler was this like blameless, blameless fella who <laughs> just got done dirty by the evil America. You know, it's just uh, yeah, I'm not quite convinced on that. You know, so uh, um, at least we can all agree that Stalin was up to no good. Stalin, and we was- should not have teamed up with him. Stalin was up to no good. I don't like Stalin. Either. He started making trouble in the neighborhood. I got in one <laughs> little fight, and my mom got scared. And they sent me to a place called Auschwitz. <laughs> they sent me to the Gulag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we have any other thoughts on Santa Inc. before we get taken down for hate speech? Um, I did not like this movie. I this show. Yeah. The uh, go watch it. Yeah. Even well, a. Ner- 
Well, just really hope there's gonna be a season two because I'm I'm hooked. I wanna see how Candy Smalls controls the North Pole, okay? She is the best girl boss and you, you guys are all doing her dirty, okay? Like, all the characters were annoying in this show, but she was not the worst, okay? And I, I wanna see how even though she's been trying to fight for good, has she been corrupted? Is it capitalism's fault? What will happen? I guess we'll probably well, never, I'll we'll make never my, know. My prediction will be there does not need to be a season two, because if the main girl boss character was pursuing power the entire show, and they even try to... The show that has the shittiest, like, dick jokes and just poop jokes and stuff, they try to end each episode with, like, a sentimental moment, like she's doing karaoke, saying, Oh, I will be the phoenix and rise! And there's no, like, punchline to end it. It's just you're supposed to feel sentimental. So I'm guessing they will not have any continuing arc for this character now that she has succeeded because then they would have to like show her failing or being evil and they're definitely not going to do that because well, this is the no. self-insert of the writer. But that's not true completely because she is doing quite fucked up shit in this show. Like she runs over the reindeer while texting on the phone and she she, she, hit, she hit and runs and she's done a lot of evil stuff and and her, she neglected her friends and they they all pissed at her and in the end i guess they they're happy that she succeeds but of I course mean, they, they are yeah but but they definitely don't shy away from showing her as, but as it doing bad things it. it justifies it saying that that's what all the men have to do so she just has to do what the men have to do and it's not because of her it's the circumstance. That's kind of the the morality of this of the show. So it's okay for her to do it because everyone else is doing it. No, I, I don't think so. I think the the point is that it's like a bad system. Well, I guess I guess that's kind of you got to break similar, the peppermint but, ceiling. But I, I well, think now the, that she's in control, is she going to fix the broken system or perpetuate it? Well, she's already made some improvements because like. There was a point where she made a strike, where she inspired all the, the elves to strike so that Santa couldn't take off. And then she, she, she blackmailed him into giving them maternity leave and health insurance. So, I mean, she's definitely making a some kind of positive change. But she's obviously been corrupted by, by the system and by, by the profit motive and everything. So, I, I don't know. I think it makes sense that, that she would be shown doing evil and, and she Yeah, but I don't think blameless. that there's... I don't think the showrunner has the self-awareness to make a whole season about her self-insert character being evil. Yeah. So why, then why would they include the, the hit and run? Because they're trying... I mean, I haven't seen right, those episodes, but from what, Kino, well, from what Kino is saying, it sounds like they're <laughs> trying to say this is the only way you can make it in this man-run system. They're trying to be clever and satirical, but really it just sounds like it wasn't very good. Yeah, I think it would have been a better ending in a differently executed show. Because I think you could do that. But it's like the it's like Schrodinger's joke. You don't really know if they're being serious with this with the setup or they're just gonna make fun of it later down the line. So I think what I think the setup of like the corruption of Candy, I think that could have worked in a differently executed show. In in a show that's full of elves saying cute things saying fuck. Uh, uh, poorly landed dick jokes. Uh, <laughs> you, barely any set set weekend setups. Warrior. I think it distracting. Weekend yeah. Warrior. Just you're just talking about Succession. <laughs> I haven't watched that, so I'll just laugh and agree with you. Okay, yeah. I think the only salvageable way to make a good season two is literally if they make Kino Corner write the script. That's the only way there, there will be any real satire, any nuance to the characters, to the jokes, to the situations. I think Kino Corner could write a real uh, Jewy shadow government uh, Santa plot that would be entertaining and enlightening after he has learned so much from watching this great documentary. Yeah, just let me do some more research. Uh, yeah. Let me consult Kino Fortune. Corner, the, the, the greatest story ever told. <laughs> Is it safe oh. to, if you're going to fall asleep <laughs> watching something so that it goes into your dreams, you probably don't want it to be the six-hour Hitler documentary. <laughs> it's like, do you really want that in your subconscious as you're asleep? 
All these Hitler speeches and shit. What are you talking about Hitler speeches? It was a whole bunch of Band of Brothers scores. Like, <laughs> <laughs> over just, you know... Okay, I like the Band of Brothers music. I think it's a great score. But, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's just a... Uh, 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 half of it was just montages of Eva, <laughs> Eva Braun and Hitler having a good time with, you know, what? Spielberg music playing over it. You know, I like the Spielberg music. It's just them hanging out? <laughs> well, there was a lot of that. It was like asking Eva Braun, like, and then I saw Eva Braun say, come on, Hitler, it's dinner time. And then it, it's like this, <laughs> they're trying to care, like humanize him with, with this stuff, but it comes off as like really strange and really um does the documentary mention the concentration camps even once okay so an hour in and i didn't really care to to finish a six and a half hour documentary because i had to watch this three hour long tv show about elves and Sa and santa saying fuck um so you know uh, priorities right there right um but anyways in the first hour uh no absolutely no mention <laughs> of um of concentration they, they gotta camps. ease you into it. Once you see three hours of Hitler and Eva Braun footage, then you'll be comfortable <laughs> with the concentration camp. Yeah, no mention of that whatsoever. No mention of, you know, anything bad. He was just a misunderstood guy, you know, according to this. Uh, and, and the victors write history, so they make him out to be as evil as possible. He didn't do anything wrong. That's what this documentary is saying, basically. So, so... so. Yeah, How I wasn't did quite interested in finishing it. In that hour, did, did they just describe him being in, in art school and stuff? Or did they actually get yeah, to him it being was just the counselor? His, no, it was just his like, early life stuff. Um, so it was just I about guess it's him. it's chronological then. Uh, it is, yeah, it is chronological. And in talking about so we, we got to skip to four hours in to get to the funny stuff. <laughs> yeah, but then it like skip skips ahead a little, I but, guess. But then <laughs> it kind of skips ahead, you know? And it also... Um, says that like the Reichstag was burned down by uh, communists or something like that. It, it basically implies that Hitler was right about his, um, who he blamed the uh, burning of the Reichstag on. So that's also kind of funny. Um, who actually did it? <laughs> well, it's unknown, I mean, actually. It's unknown. Yeah, it's unknown. Oh. No one knows who did it. But I think that, I think that saying that the, uh, the National Socialist Party doing it as a false flag, it's a, I, I, I don't <laughs> think that's too out there. Of a I, of a thought, but um, yeah, it seems like a good but. Yeah, well, Florian, when you come visit America, are you gonna watch that movie? <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. Eight <laughs> hours. Not what would happen time. if you tried to watch it in Austria? Would they just kick down your door and arrest you? And you'd yeah, be like, oh, could, this is nothing at all at like moment. a Nazi state. <laughs> yeah, that, that was sure one, glad we're past the Nazis. There, there was one guy who got arrested for sharing a picture of of like food. That was Hitler's favorite food on Hitler's no. birthday, and then no way! What? That's so that's yeah, crazy. crazy. Shithole country. Yeah, no, no, real. he, was, he was definitely a Nazi. Come on, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you do oh, that? He was definitely. I think he, he, I, definitely I think he said like Come happy on, birthday fine. or something. So I, I mean, it's, oh my god, I can't even tell if Florian is actually <laughs> pro arresting yeah. a man or not. <laughs> Nah, he, he was found guilty, but he wasn't charged, so he just has to stop doing it, and he, he won't go to jail. Oh. Oh, you'll never take that freedom from me! <laughs> I'll share Hitler's favorite food every fucking day! Yeah. Wait, Florian, Yeah, you... but, but it's a sh it's an IRL shitpost, isn't it? Well, <laughs> it's so obvious, like, well, why did they imprison well, the guy? It's what so is Hitler's dumb, favorite like... food? That's what I want to know now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that wasn't covered in the six-hour documentary? <laughs> Look, I only, made, I only made it one hour in. They didn't get to his uh, his favorite food yet. That's that, I think that's from three to four hours in. <laughs> I, I, I think I think it was yeah. some kind of dumplings with egg. So they, oh, oh, delicious. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to see the copium they have when Hitler unalives himself. What would they say there? <laughs> I, I, I'm really curious now. Like... Yeah. It sounds like uh, Kino clear. needs to get to work on another script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the greatest story never told too. Uh, and it's going to be mixed with Santa Incorporated. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be about the Santa that came before, because in Santa Inc., the Santa that was right before Seth Rogen was an actual Nazi. That well, is true. I'm glad you brought it back to Santa I, Inc. I, I we think have to that was right up. before him, was it? That was like two generations ago, I think. Let's go around, everybody. Let us know 
did you think this show was Kino? And what would you like to plug? Let's begin with one, Florian Himsel. Uh, I, I gotta say, it, it, it's Kino, you gotta see it. it. It has the worst jokes, but I think it's actually somewhat aware politically. What is Kino it about to it? The story. <laughs> what part of it is Kino? <laughs> hey, I was funny. engaged in the story, writing, okay? It's Kino. <laughs> I had I yeah, had to yeah, look yeah, up. That's weird. I had to look yeah, up what, weird, what, why this everyone hates so- it so much. Okay, it, it well, was puzzling to the me. Story, what the story. What does the word "keno" okay, mean to you? <laughs> this, well, sorry, and you keep saying the story's okay, but the jokes suck. Everything about the show is the joke. I, I, I don't get it. Man. Yeah. As I said, I was hooked. Okay, I was confused by people. You were market, hooked. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. I okay. enjoyed it. Sorry. You said it's just like Robot Chicken, and you hate Robot Chicken. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I just, like, managed to somehow skip the jokes in my mind. I don't know, just focused on the nice claymation, uh, you know? Okay. <laughs> well, it happened. Well, Weekend Warrior, let's hear from you. I, I think it's the opposite of Kino. What? And the opposite of Kino is... Oh... Uh, Onik. It's Onik. It's, it, it, su- <laughs> it sucks. Don't Don't watch it. Don't even, like, watch it. Oh, maybe some parts of it are funny. I think the funniest thing about it would be the trailer. And but, imagine the trailer for, like, three hours. That's the show. So At least the trailer and, had a funny like-to-dislike ratio. <laughs> yeah, that, that, true. That's true. And I, I'm going to plug, like, my video on Cowboy Bebop and why that's terrible. I think Cowboy Bebop Netflix is a little bit more entertaining than than Santa Inc. It's oh. that bad. I'm Santa looking Inc. forward that bad. To, to that Cowboy Bebop show. It can't be that bad, can it? Oh! Florian, my boy! You might need to watch uh, Weekend Warriors video right after this. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, I, there, I have a tip for you, Florian. If you type Cowboy Bebop on Netflix, you watch the animated version, n- not the one with John Cho. I've, I've seen it, okay? I, I gotta see... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see the new one. <laughs> Don't it's, do that, man. It's, it's, the new one. it's rebooted. Florian, there's a brand new season of Alex Ryder that just came out two days ago. You could watch that. Is it good? <laughs> uh, I've been watching it. Uh, it's as good as the first season was, and I think we both enjoyed it. And also, there was a um, Solar Opposites Christmas episode. Did you watch that? Was it out already? Wow, I gotta see this. Yeah. <laughs> and that was also uh, as good as the show usually is, so... They didn't have anything with the wall people, but Aww. the aliens were good. Oh, I'm sure they're saving all the wall for the next season. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. <laughs> Kino, what about you? Tell us how you thought this show was pure Kino. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I think that my, my thoughts on this show have been solidified for the last 48 minutes or so. <laughs> um, <laughs> In that I do not think it's Kino, but what I do think is Kino is how it has caused um, Seth Rogen and Sarah Silverman and their gang of blue check marks to mold, cope, see, dilate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. On Twitter, <laughs> it's been really fun seeing them sort of melt down and everyone hating this new show and calling everybody a white supremacist and talking about how this is all anti-Semitism. When the show that they are uh, they are promoting. I would argue uh, has <laughs> is very anti-Semitic. It also, and also, this show paints the black guy, at least until the, the end, as a drug dealer. Um, you know, so it's got some like weird racial stereotypes in the show, and yet they are saying that anyone who doesn't like it, anyone who is for equality, like myself, um, you know, who finds this show, uh, let's just say, problematic to be a white supremacist, which is completely false. In fact, they're the problematic ones, I would definitely argue. Um, but seeing them just completely uh, melt down online is always fun. I love seeing blue check marks just being, you know, tortured and uh, whatever, you know, whatever. Has Seth Rogen DM'd you asking you if you're Jewish? Uh, he asked me if I was an elf. <laughs> Did he actually <laughs> say that to you? He said, uh, are, are you an elf by any chance? Uh, <laughs> oh, and you you replied with your credentials. You sent him the el- elf star that you proudly wear on your chest every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also, you know, it was a nice touch in Santa Inc. I just want to bring up this last little point, how they had what looked like Martin Luther King Jr. as the uh, star on their Christmas trees. Uh, very progressive. They did? Yeah. I did not see that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It, initially, I thought it was George Floyd, and honestly, it would have been a lot funnier if it was George <laughs> <No>. Floyd. <laughs> it should have been. It should have been George Floyd. If they had George Floyd on there, I would have said the show was Kino. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so, you know, it, it sucks. Don't watch it. Don't don't give it any attention, uh, aside from, you know, watch, listening to this podcast. Don't give any attention. It's probably not going to come back for a second season because it's just awful. Um, but what do I have to plug uh, at this time that this uh, podcast is going to be releasing, which is going to be Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon. I'll have a new video out ranking every single A24 horror movie. Oh, um, shit. So, so uh, yeah, I'm almost done with that now recording this over the weekend. But I'm almost done with that now. But that will be out at uh, the time that this uh, podcast releases. So go check that out. And for next week's episode, if anybody wants to watch at home beforehand, I think we're finally going to do the double feature of, uh, what are these movies called? The Last Duel and House of Gucci. House of Gucci, yeah. People have actually been asking for that one, so that one you'll sucks. get it next week. <laughs> uh, I will conclude by saying the show is probably the funniest thing I've seen this year. It has a lot of heart, a lot of uh, Christmas cheer. Uh, the the satire I really think hit home pretty hard and I think a lot of changes in society are going to be made because of this HBO cartoon and I, I really loved it uh, 11 out of 10 I'm gonna show this to my family every Hanukkah hell yeah <laughs> finally oh, no, Lauren unironically Oops. agrees <laughs> <laughs> see I, I, I knew Mumkin would have to like it cause he he, he likes bad things, right? Like the Emoji Movie. So it must be something, right? It's, Did I say I like liked the Emoji Movie? I don't know if I said that. <laughs> I said, put your three-year-old kid in front of it and leave the room. <laughs> well, you don't, wouldn't want to do that with this one, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Anyways, I, I forgot to plug my thing. I, I'm releasing a game in January. It's called Ballfrog. Look it up on, on Steam. Hopefully well, it's boys, than thank you England. for thank you for coming together on this Christmas holiday for all of us. You know, from around the world, we have all three of the great continents represented here, and we all came together to celebrate how shitty and unfunny Seth Rogen truly is. So, I think uh, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>